if you come home at night in the park, you see a tick on your skin, what would you tell a patient if you saw a tick bite? How would you approach that? The most important thing is that for people who go to camp or they go out to the beach, it's very important every night to shower or to bathe and to use a washcloth and just rub the washcloth over the skin. You want to make sure that you do that around the neck, all the way around the neck, under the arms and around the groin area where you bend your legs because those are places that the ticks like. The tick will attach onto the ankles, crawl up to a nice warm moist spot and that's why those areas are favorites of the tick and will sit there. The tick has to be attached for at least 24 hours in order to transmit the infection that causes Lyme disease. So if you're in the beach in the morning or you're hiking somewhere where you know is an area that there are ticks that carry Lyme and you shower at night, even if you find a tick that falls off, it wouldn't be there long enough to cause the infection. So if you do that every night, you're really protecting yourself. So preventative care, covering up areas that are exposed is a wise idea. Definitely, definitely important. If you have a tick bite and you did not notice it, it was on your body for more than a day or two, uh, should you save the tick? Should you throw the tick away? What would be your approach to that problem? You know, unfortunately, there really aren't very many places that test the tick anymore. That used to be done, and people would be able to examine that tick and determine based on the size of the tick how long it had been attached to the body and what the risk was of getting the infection. That's really not a very practical thing to do. You really need to be expert in that to make any kind of determination. But so it's small, really not the, done the anymore. Small, the small little a bite. tiny tick, a very small tick, is unlikely to have been there for a long time. And these are ticks that are very small as opposed to dog ticks, the kinds that you might find on your pet. These ticks are very tiny, about the size of a poppy seed. Or you know, if you took a magic marker and put a dot on your skin, that's about the size of these ticks. As they stay attached and they have a blood meal, they do grow in size. So if it's been there for a while, it will look bigger. The important thing to do is to talk to your doctor because your doctor may do a blood test right then as a baseline to see if you've already been exposed to Lyme in the past. Many patients who live in areas where Lyme disease is very prevalent have already been exposed at some point and didn't even know. They never got sick, but they may have been exposed. So by doing that lab test, you can tell what the baseline is, and then six to eight weeks later, that test can be repeated to see if suddenly that patient has become positive. The other things to look for are the very typical rash, which looks like a bullseye. And that rash might be near the tick bite, but it doesn't have to be near it. And that looks like a red patch that slowly expands and becomes bigger and looks like a ring in the end, just like a bullseye. And that would be a typical rash of Lyme disease, and a physician who is told or sees that rash on a patient would start antibiotics, even regardless of the test result. And pediatrics, what would be the drug you would normally use when, say, a kid about six, seven years old? Yes, that's, the age is important because under a certain age, we don't use certain types of medication because the child is growing, and some antibiotics have side effects. So under the at that age, we give very easy medicine like amoxicillin, and we give it for weeks. And most children do extremely well, and we get rid it? of the infection. How long? Well, that varies between two and four weeks. But in that range? In that range. If it was an older person, 15 or older, what would you use as your drug of choice? Then the best medicine is an antibiotic called doxycycline. And that works very nicely also to get rid of the infection. And how long that would be given, Joe? Again, the same course, about two to four weeks. Just having a tick bite that looks like maybe it was a dead tick, you don't give antibiotics prophylactically. We don't. It doesn't make sense. Or giving this one dose, which I hear a lot of people have been doing right. lately, doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all because the majority of ticks do not carry the infection or they're not on for long enough to transmit the infection. So just having a tick would not be enough to put somebody on the antibiotic. And the tick has to be embedded for minimum 24 to 48 That's hours. Right. So we're probably giving antibiotics inappropriately too many Absolutely. times. Absolutely. We also don't treat the preliminary Lyme test. There are two types of lab tests. 
One is called a line titer or an ELISA test, and that test is not specific. Many kinds of very common infections that people have had in the past or bacteria that they've been exposed to in the past can make that test turn positive even though it's not the kind of infection for Lyme disease. So if that screening test is positive, then the doctor needs to go ahead and order the more specific Lyme test. And only if that test is positive, called the Western blot, would we treat with antibiotics. Do you need a certain number of positives to say this? You do. There are certain criteria. So when we do that test, that Western blot test, there are two things that we learn. One is something called IgM, and that's the body's immune system's reaction for an early infection, something new. And for an IgM to be positive, there should be three of those bands, three of those proteins that show up as positive. And for the IgG bands, which show an infection that happened months ago, that one needs to have five bands that are positive in order to be a true positive test for Lyme disease. Uh, there was several years ago, uh, over the radio, 1-800-TICK-BITE, you walked in, and they were giving injections for three weeks. Is that done anymore? No, and it shouldn't be done. Unfortunately, because Lyme became such a fear, especially in our area of New York, where Lyme is really quite prevalent, unfortunately, there was a tremendous fear about many, many types of symptoms being due to Lyme. So people who were very tired and kind of achy thought they had Lyme and they would go to one of these Lyme specialists and were treated with inappropriate antibiotics. And unfortunately, people get side effects even from simple antibiotics when they're not used correctly. Is Lyme disease becoming more or less in the populations today? It may actually be coming a little bit less as people learn how to prevent Lyme disease. So now I hear many kids tell me that in their camp or in their Girl Scout or Boy Scout program, when they go on a hike or a trip, they're told to wear jeans and to tuck their jeans into their socks. These are all preventive things that people do to try to avoid a tick getting on you. And then at camps, I hear from a lot of children that at camp they do look for ticks at night. And so that's all very smart and a very good way to try to prevent the disease. So people are much more aware now than they used to be. So it seems because we're doing the right thing, we're going to have less of it, we hope, yes. down the road. And there are also very good tick repellents, even in sunscreen nowadays. And that's also very helpful. So for children who go to a camp where they may be at high risk or are doing activities during the day where they may be exposed, it's a very good idea to use one of those products. They are safe for children and they can help to repel ticks. Is there any particular main ingredient you look for if you look for? The ingredient is called DEET, D-E-E-T, and I know that a lot of parents are fearful because in the past it's been said to be a very powerful chemical, but the amount that's put in these products is safe for children. And so when we look at what we call the risk-benefit ratio, the bad things that could happen from using it versus the bad things that could happen from not using it, these are very safe products to use and certainly the protection outweighs any of the risk because you're not going to apply that much.